Hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, Infinite Crypto Cruisers. Hey there, folks. This is Brad Varnell, and this is the Infinite Crypto YouTube channel. And today I am excited to introduce to you a new segment called Token Teasers. And today we have our first episode, and I've got a gentleman that I'm looking forward to introducing you to. We've been researching this project for about the last week, and we are super excited about their mission. We're excited about the prospect of this happening having an amazing run during this bull market. And I've had an opportunity to get to know this gentleman a little bit, and I'm really excited to hear what he has to say, not only about this project, but just his general views on life and the cryptocurrency markets, you know, all together. So without any further ado, let me introduce you to Josh, who is an incredible uh, community member of the Kin Project. Welcome to the channel, Josh. Hey, Brad, how's it going? Love the I'm doing intro. Fantastic. How are you today? I'm good. Love the intro. Thank you. Thank you, man. It's uh, great to have you. I appreciate you taking a few minutes out of your busy day to spend some time with us. I know you've got a lot going on. So as I mentioned in the introduction, we're talking about, you know, the Kin token. You can see the website there, folks, kineconomy.com. So let's just, you know, dive right into it. If you want to tell us a little bit about your background and how you got into crypto and why you got excited about Kin, that would be a fantastic place to start. Yeah. Hey, everyone. My name's Josh. I've been around the space for quite a long time from Toronto and Ethereum was actually created in the city. Uh, I discovered Ethereum around $9, Bitcoin 600, NFTs or CryptoPunks 100 bucks. And I've just been really early to really large narratives in this industry. I've worked in the space as well. Uh, and today I'm a community member, but also leading a community takeover of a project from 2017 called Kin. And uh, Kin was actually the first project to migrate to Solana, a really storied uh, upcoming and, and founding of the token by uh, Ted Livingston and Kick Messenger, who was the first Web2 company to take crypto seriously, uh, issue a token, and has a really long story uh, that I'm excited to dive into in a, in a moment here. So thanks, Brad, for the, for the intro. Awesome, man. I love that. You know, one of the things that I'm looking for when I'm going to introduce, you know, a project to my to my viewers is something that's kind of stood the test of time. You know, I know that there's a lot of projects out there that are launching, you know, right now, AI projects and different things. But I think it's important for a project to have made it through at least one bear market. And you guys have made it through two, which is super impressive. And so, you know, go ahead and give us a little bit more of an idea about exactly what problem. You know, I also look for cryptos that are solving a problem, you know, that are actually needed. There's so many cryptos out there that really if they disappeared tomorrow, we wouldn't miss them, but it really feels like Ken is solving some problems in the real world. So if you want to get into that, that'd be great. Yeah. What really excites me about Ken and why I got really excited about the project in the first place is a, there was this very large web two company that uh, was, you know, getting into crypto and it was the first to do that kick messenger was the first messaging app other than BlackBerry Messenger back in 2010, 2011. And it went absolutely viral. It was one of the fastest growing products ever in the world. And at one point in 2015 was the top, the number one social app in the United States with 300 million users. And here comes this really mainstream, large consumer app uh, that says, hey, we think crypto is a new business model and something interesting for users. Uh, that creates an aligned economy between users, developers, and investors. And at the time, you know, Telegram didn't have the Ton coin. Facebook hadn't done Libra yet. And so they were really pioneers in uh, let's look at this new technology as a different way to monetize. And not just for themselves. One of the great things about great products that have ever been built is when teams build products that are you know, for, to solve problems that they experience. And so they wanted to build not for themselves, but for other consumer apps. And so in the same way that Bitcoin has a mining reward, the Kin token was used to incentivize developers to implement the crypto experience within their native app, and as well as uh, incentivize users to use it. 
and it used to be magic. You could send one kin, you could send kin tokens that you earned in one consumer app to another app and buy digital goods, join group chats, tip users, buy item skins or weapons in shooter games. And it was a really, really fun experience. Uh, now that project went through a lot of challenges from 2017 to today. And in that time, they migrated the project to Solana and met the Solana founders in 2020, early 2020. And I remember being on a live stream with uh, Raj and Anatoly from the Solana Foundation back before the token existed, before uh, the testnet existed. And the real crux of it is Kin should be on this network because Solana had a low latency, high bandwidth blockchain. And that was perfect for building consumer experiences because today with Ethereum and other, uh, you know, networks back in 2019, like you couldn't send coins to another user and sit there with a spin wheel as you waited 14 minutes for it to confirm on, on chain. That just wouldn't work. Right. Yeah, man, it's such a such an easy app to use. You know, you had me download the code wallet and then showed me how easy it was to, you know, send me send me a couple of dollars and vice versa. I sent you a couple of dollars back so that we could I could get a feel for the wallet. And man, it's such a smooth, it's magic, uh, beautiful interface. It is magic. Magic. It is zero to one type experience. And so what what uh so code wallet is a wallet app that uses kin. And they're creating a micropayments network on Solana. And you can think of code as not just a wallet that's on your phone, your iOS or Android phone, but it's also a layer two that's been built on Solana. And they were the first to do this. And the reason you need another layer on top of Solana is you need to tee up pre-signed transactions that when you hand cash to someone else and they scan it with their phone, it's instant. And if anyone has ever sent a phantom transaction, let's say you're using USDC on phantom, you know, you have to put in the other address, you have to sign the transaction, you click send, you get the spin wheel. And even Solana is as quick as it is, is not instant. And then, oh, the transaction failed. And you can't, when you're giving cash between users, you can't have transactions failing. Why did the transaction fail? Visa doesn't fail. My bank doesn't fail. But oh, my Solana transaction failed. And so not all transactions do that, of course. Uh, so what code did is they said, hey, we're going to build a layer on top of Solana that uses the speed, security, and self-custody of Solana, but it's teeing up transactions so that feels instant. And they've open sourced all this software. Uh, it's 700,000 lines of code. And uh, yeah, I'd love to kind of just even show this off because I think once you see it, it, it really becomes obvious that this is an incredible experience. Uh, so here, actually, I have Brad's tip card. Here is what you see in the center of the screen. Uh, tipping is kind of a killer use case today. And back to what Brad was saying at the top of the show, like I invest in cryptocurrencies that are being used not just for speculation, because I think, you know, that's a killer app of crypto. It's been around forever is, you know, buy it because you might sell it higher in the future. What we're seeing today with Kin is that people are using it to consume it and give tips to each other and use it for live stream and uh, selling digital goods. And I'll show you exactly what that looks like. So right here we have Brad's tip card. I have the scanner here. So you can go to getcode.com and you can download the app. So basically just a scanner, I go and scan Brad's tip card and it asks for how much money I want to put in. Now, of course, I'm in Canada, so this is going to be in Canadian $1 dollars. $1 million. Don't, don't hate on my currency. <laughs> so I click $1 there. I click next. Now, what's really cool about the tip card is it pulls in Brad's X account. You can see Brad's X account, his handle, also the verified check mark. And then it allows me to swipe to send this. And you saw it there just jump to prompt the user. So I swipe to send. And there we go. I sent it. Now, Brad, did you just get a tip? Boom. It's instantly. already there, man. Real time. Absolutely instantly. Absolutely instantly. And, you know, Brad and I are transacting on Solana. We're in custody of our own keys. And this is self-custody. Uh, self so anyone really in the, the world can use this product. Uh, and it's truly magical. Yeah, man. I love that. Any, you mentioned before we went on camera that you had a couple other websites that you'd like to walk people through? Yeah, absolutely. So I think uh, 
what we like to show at Ken here is ways that people are using this currency for everyday use. So right here, I actually have a live streamer who's streaming Halo right now. And okay. uh, so this is one of our community members, Kinships. Now, I can't say that they're any good at Halo, but you know what? We like the person, <laughs> so we're going to tip them. So what you can okay. see here is getcode.com. That's, again, the website you can download the code wallet from. But here is their uh, tip card. Now, I showed you Brad's card at first, but this is just pulling out the, uh, let's say, QR code from that tip card, and it's on stream. So again, have my code wallet. I say, oh, I love Kinship's gameplay. And I grab their tip card. I put in, you know, actually, I'm going to give Kinship's two bucks because I like Kinship's two bucks. Again, you can see Kinship's uh, X account verified. Going to go swipe. Boom. Now Kinship's just got uh, $2. Let's see another use case. So this here is uh, what I really love is that actually Kin is growing a lot in Africa. And so here we have some African streamers. Uh, they're doing a rap. Uh, so it's it's a proxy boy here. So again, got my code wallet. Going to go tip. Uh, it's proxy boy. Send them a dollar. Again, swipe. And it's just instant. I could do this all yeah. day. Now, Proxy Boy on the other side of the world just got a dollar and a notification. Their phone just vibrated and boom, a dollar in their code wallet. I just sent I just sent the uh, the guy that was playing the Call of Duty a dollar too, man. Just instant, just like that. Amazing, scanned isn't his, it? Scanned his QR code from here while, you know, on my computer and, and done, man. Just took a matter of seconds. That's awesome. So on code, you also get to see your balances. So this is all different tips that I've sent to people. So I'm splashing kin around the internet, like heavily. Yep. Uh, and which, you know, kind of cool because as the, the dollar price of kin, and we'll get to kin the token in a minute, as the dollar price of kin goes up, my purchasing power as someone tipping other people also goes up. So right now sending one Canadian dollar is about 49,000 kin. But if kin 10 X is in price, Sending one Canadian dollar of kin is actually going to be 4,900 kin, not 49,000. And so I'm really excited about what this is going to do uh, to, you know, people's, uh, you know, buying power, especially in other countries. The next experience I'm going to show is one of the killer unsolved problems of the internet, which is paywalls on articles. And everyone hates this. You go to Forbes, someone sends you an article and there's a stinking pay button. And you're like, yo, I got to sign up for a $9 a month subscription. That's that's crap. I don't want to do that. So Kin's actually solved their codes actually solved this problem. Now code is tipping. It's peer to peer, but it's also micropayments. And so here you could imagine this could be a, you know, uh, a recipe article or it could be, you know, Brad's monthly breakdown. And I just want to read one article. I don't want to subscribe for $9 to this user. Uh, I just want to be able to pay for 25 cents. So right here, what's going to pop up is a pay receipt for 25 cents. Now, this is essentially requesting 25 cents from me as a user. So right here, again, have the scanner up. Gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pull that receipt onto my phone. And again, I did that in real time. Again, swipe. Now watch what happens to the screen when I swipe this. Wow. Awesome. That is incredible. So now the, uh, the author of this article just got 24 cents deposit into their account. And one cent went to Code Wallet, so they do generate a little bit of revenue. Uh, now, this is a this is this is amazing. What if you could do five cents for an AI image, right? You know, using Mid Journey and spending seventy dollars a month really sucks. But if you could just pay five cents per AI image you generate, you know, that's really cool incentive for different uh, creators. Or let's say you create AI content, right? You create a short AI story, a short AI video. You put a five cent paywall on that. Now you can monetize and all you're doing is taking AI content and monetizing with code. And this code button, so if you go to pennypost.co, you can actually use this. This is essentially a medium clone. So right here, I'll show you what Penny Post looks like. So I'll show you how to create an article. 
it's a really cool experience. So right here, I have my code login. So this is not asking me for payment. This is me just logging into my Penny Post account. So again, I have the code app. I'm going to scan that login card. So the login card is pulled onto my phone. Now watch what happens when I swipe. Again, I just logged in to Penny Post and I can start creating an article right here live. Brad's live stream newsletter. Awesome. And now Brad can accept payment from his community. Let's say, Brad, you already have a Substack. You could just paste your content in here, throw a 25 cent paywall on it. And even if you just had 100 or 200 users pay you to read that article, you'll make more money than you would with Substack. So not only yep. we did, did we solve micropayments on the internet in a way that Visa can't do, the way that banking can't do, the way that any other crypto can't do, a, we also then solve the monetization problem of these platforms while we give our data and information and our creativity, we make no money from them. And so these are uh, penny posts and you know, putting your tip card on your stream is a, a great way to do that. So I'll pause there and maybe, Brad, I don't know if you have any specific questions. No, man, that that is awesome. And just so many ideas come to mind. You know, I have uh, on my live streams where occasionally people will want to, you know, do a super chat. And but, you know, now they got to they got to go in, they got to put all their bank information in. They got to link that all up. Um, you know, YouTube takes 30 percent of the super chat. So I'm thinking to myself, why not post this when I'm doing my live streams and say, hey, folks, Instead of doing a super chat, if you'd like to, you know, compensate me for my time, you want to reward me, why don't you just, you know, send me a tip uh, through Kin? It, you know, free to them, doesn't cost me 30%, much easier for them to download this code app and do it with uh, crypto. So um, one quick question that does come to mind, can they tip in multiple different currencies or is it only the Kin token? Yes. So that's a great question. So before I answer that question, I think I'll, I'll explain why what excites me about this project. I've been in crypto for eight years now. I've used this technology extensively. I've never experienced a moment where I'm like, this is what crypto always should have been. And when I use code and kin, I feel like this is what crypto should be. This is the type of experience, self-custody, that's a floating currency, meaning that if King goes up in price, so does my purchasing power in the same way that Bitcoin went from a dollar to $60,000. Like this is what crypto should be. And the first sentence of the Bitcoin white paper is Bitcoin is peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash. And arguably, Bitcoin has not fulfilled that vision. Bitcoin today is a beautiful thing, which is a store of value that's relied on by a lot of people. But sending money with Bitcoin, sending money with stable coins, which again, aren't real crypto. And I agree with that. Stable coins are just, you know, the dollar, but stable on, you know, Solana uh, right. and any other meme token or anything. Sending it, it's just, it's just not fun. It's not interesting. It sucks. It's hard to use. What happens when you show your grandmother it? She's like, dude, I don't get this. This is crazy. So that's why I love this um, experience so much. Now to your question, Brad, uh, when you're in the app, actually, you just select the currency that you want to transact in. For me, it's Canadian dollars, but you're receiving it. Uh, you see it in Canadian dollars, but you're going to transact with me in U.S. dollars, right? Now, yep. what the app is doing is actually just showing you the equivalent value in Kin of what you're sending. So kind of like you see on the screen here, you know, it's floating through five British pounds, five Ukrainian kroners, five U.S. dollars. And the akin amount below it is changing in real time because the five equivalent of these currencies is different for any national currency. So, you know, five rupees is 500 kin, whereas five euros is 55,000 kin, right? Makes so sense. it's just sending the, um, the corresponding amount of, of kin. And what kin is essentially a floating currency like Bitcoin, right? Like when we're transacting, you say, send me a thousand dollar Bitcoin at a thousand dollar Bitcoin is one Bitcoin, but send me a thousand dollar Bitcoin today at 65,000 is like 0 0.005 or something like 0 0.002, right? Um, we all have stories, especially those that have been around for a while. Hey, I bought t shirts for 0.1 BTC you know, seven years ago and highly regret doing that because today that those t-shirts 
are probably destroyed and worn out, but that 0.1 BTC is worth 6,000 US dollars. Yes. Uh, so the same kind of floating currency here exists. And so I'll show Kin in a second here. So this is what uh, the Kin token is. Again, this has been around. It launched on Ethereum, then went to Stellar, then was the first project to migrate to Solana. So it's had a few chain migrations. And the reason they've done this is because at that given moment in time, what is the best technology to deliver a consumer grade experience? That's what the team has always been focused on. It ended up being Solana and thankfully Solana has been the right choice. You know, Solana from 2020 was 30 cents at its Dutch auction. Today, Solana is 150 US dollars trading. So if you're part of the King community back then, you were exposed to the founders at the very beginning of what became the most exciting blockchain ecosystem in the entire industry. Uh, so this is the Kin token valued at 600 or ranked 675th, uh, has a $40 million market cap. What's really interesting is that it has a fixed supply. And so what's important about this is no additional Kin is coming to market. There's no Kin being emitted for marketing purposes. There's no Kin be given to venture capitalists or market makers uh, to drive liquidity. There's no Kin that's being emitted to developers that can be sold uh, to, you know, just implement it. So I like looking at projects that have a fixed and fully diluted supply. Um, yep. On top of that, because we were the first project on Solana, we actually got a large soul grant. So we got tens of thousands of soul tokens back in the day when they were one or $2. Well, today what we're doing is we're taking that soul and have a buyback and burn of kin on the open market. And so for the next 180 days, every single hour we buy and burn about 100 US dollars. And so that buy back and burn is just humming along in the background. Um, and so there's about four, half a million dollars worth of, of kin that is yet to be bought, bought back and burned. I love it, man. I love it. And that's, you know, one of the reasons that we invited you to be on the channel was we just see incredible potential uh, with this project. You say that it's just 100% community driven too at this point. Yes. So community takeover, uh, there used to be a quote unquote foundation, but, uh, you know, as any project that has uh, learned either through the law or just through what is working, what's not working, uh, they shut down the foundation and burned all the outstanding supply that would have been inflationary. But they said, hey, look, having a central team manage this is not working. Having the community manage uh, kin and fully decentralizing the project so that not one entity is in control of the project. It's managed by a community of contributors was the right approach in the same way that now Bitcoin is fully decentralized and other cryptocurrencies are managed by their communities. Cool. And, you know, if my viewers want to go out and buy some kin tokens, where's the, where's your favorite spot to go buy kin at? Yes. Uh, so I'll show those markets in a second. Uh, this here is the buyback and burn wallet. I, I show this just because uh, you can see the address here. So if you want to go search it, you can search it, but you can track this in real time that this wallet is the one purchasing back all the kin. You can see every hour, one hour, two hours, three hours ago, four hours, five hours, six ago, we're buying 6 million, 6 million, 6 million, 6 million, 6.5 million buying kin every single hour. And this kin will be removed from supply. So that's kind of like the quote unquote tokenomics. Um, there is no like revenue sharing or anything like kin is purely a currency in the same way Bitcoin is. But this is just the proof on chain that, you know, that is being bought and burned. Uh, the As for the markets, there is no real major exchanges that have this listed. So you can buy it on Mexi. You can buy it on Kraken outside of the US, Gate.io okay. Gate and Coinex. Those are the centralized exchanges. But most of the on-chain liquidity is in the Kin Radium pool, which is uh, right here. And if you go to the X account, um, it will also have the contract address in the... Um, in the description so you can kind of see kin's been range bound for you know a couple of years uh but we think this is going to start to see a solid upswing here and not financial advice i don't click the the buttons on your keyboard or anything like that but uh you know again this is where i spend my time and efforts um and what i'm looking at 
I love it. So they can just connect their Phantom wallet or whatever whatever they use to, uh, you know, to do Solana transactions, go over to Radium and buy it there. And then I love MEXC. I know, you know, everybody's got their own thoughts, but I buy a ton of tokens on MEXC. So I'm excited that I see that it's available on MEXC so that I can go, you know, buy it. I'm assuming it's super simple to send it from MEXC over here to my code wallet. Yep. Yeah, so you can just withdraw. So when you're on Code Wallet, and you can also buy with Jupiter, you just search Kin here, and it will pop up. And again, you can see the Kin contract address there. Um, I recommend doing, you know, if you were to buy it, do a DCA because there's uh, limited liquidity in the LPs. So if you swap okay. like five thousand dollars, you'll get a bunch of slippage. So DCA is the best option for users. Um, and yeah, so if I go back to code here, so let's say you want to put a couple hundred dollars so you can, um, you know, tip creators, or I'll show you another use case, which is more like driving value back to you. So actually within the code app, you can purchase kin with code. So you just go to the number one, sorry, I'm going to do that again. So you go to the top one, it says add cash with a debit card. And so yep. you click add cash with a debit card. We partnered with Cado, which is a payment processor. And so what we're doing is actually Cado is taking $250 or up to $250 out of your bank account. So you can do from, I think, 25 to 250 bucks, takes it out of your bank account and takes that money, sends USDC onto Solana, swaps it on Jupiter for Kin. So it's buying Kin at the open market. So it drives demand for Kin. And then puts in your code wallet and all that happens instantly uh, in, you know, like, I think it takes like 30 seconds to set up. So you can actually buy a kin right from your bank account. Okay. Swap it into kin and uh, then get it in your code wallet. So that's one option. The second option is if you go deposit kin, it will show your address there and you can buy it on Maxi. You can go to Jupiter, buy it with Phantom, then put it in. Uh, and then you can also withdraw your kin. Now, when you withdraw your kin, the important thing to note there is that you have to uh, fund that phantom wallet with some soul to set up the wallet and also fund it with one kin as well um, before okay. you export that kin. So there has to be at least one kin in that wallet, that destination wallet, if you're pulling it out of code. But other than that... Um, I mean, this is the best consumer experience in crypto. And if you go to the Kin Ecosystem Twitter account, this is kind of where you can find all the information on the project. Uh, you'll, this is where you'll find everything you need to know about this this payment network. So again, here's another tip card. Caden, you know, love their work. Boom, pulled it on my phone. I'm just going to send Caden a tip. I can do this all day, folks. I can do that <laughs> all day. Right. Caden got a tip. Uh, one of the other ways that I've used this, so this is my X account, is I use it to drive engagement. So with the algorithm, so I have this video here. It's got how many views? 7,500 views. So basically what I said is anyone who replies in this quoted tweet here uh, with their tip card, I'll tip them. And so what the X algorithm is doing is pulling in all these tip cards or sees all these tip cards and all these replies and it moves this tweet up the algorithm. Now this could happen with streaming, right? You say the first 50 people on my stream, I'll send you a dollar, right? All of a sudden your stream then gets into the algorithm. So people are using this in various different ways. So bunny and beer, you know, I, I like bunny and beer. Boom, dollar, swipe, send. Harold, what's up, buddy? So right now, I'm just sending people a dollar on chain right now live. Send right. it in. That's I it. love it. <laughs> and I'm glad that, you know, you kind of went over the different dollars because that explains the other day when you were helping me set my wallet up and you sent me five, it immediately turned into like three something. And I did have this weird like... I wonder why so much of it got taken in the transaction. And now it's just, it was just the difference between the Canadian dollars and the U S dollars. That's right. Yes. I won't get into politics of that, but you know, that's the Canadian dollar. <laughs> uh, actually you can see the, the dollar currency right there. So uh, mm -hmm. you see the Canadian flag. I could go and say, let's do um, Indian rupees actually real quick. So I'm going to send you 
So I select uh, Indian rupees. So now I have the Indian flag up there. I'm going to send yep. you 50 rupees, right? So 50 rupees, which actually equates to, you can see 39,000 kin. Now, if I said 500 rupees, that now goes to 398,000. So again, it's just backing out the kin value there. Uh, so 50 rupees, boom, going to click next. Oh no, I'm uh, sending that as a, uh, a thing. I could actually scan your tip card. So <laughs> let me let me go to Brad. So what I had done there is actually sent it as a a, a di digital dollar bill, just in case everyone was was wondering. But uh, Brad, what's your X account again? Uh, Crypto Brad V. Oh yeah, here I got it. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead, scanner, scan Brad's. Um, Brad's account. All right, I got the rupees up. It's there. So this is gonna give Brad fifty rupees. Next, Brad, you're gonna get fifty rupees right now. Boom. Did you get fifty rupees, Brad? Yes, I did. Yep. Shows me right here. Someone tipped uh, fifty. Here we go. We're, I got to get onto the right one. Yeah. So this bottom, this very bottom one is the, is got, you can see the right Indian there. flag there. Yep. Very cool. Very cool. I love it. Now, do you foresee this potentially being something that eventually would be mainstream enough to where you can walk into, you know, a Gucci store or some type of a retail outlet and actually pay for, services and merchandise through the app is that part of the roadmap or what is what is the future look like where does the real um adoption come in that is probably the coolest part of this thing is because we're seeing that happen now in africa this is blowing up like crazy and people are actually putting this um on their stores so let's uh so here's a user that's putting the sticker on some spot in Africa, but I'm, let's see if I can find, um, yeah, code sticker accepted here. So this is actually starting to really take off in restaurants and people, there's the Kin logo, people talking about it. And remember, Kin is fully diluted, so there is no airdrop you know, farming happening here. This is just purely utility and yep. people using this to use it. Uh, let's see if I can find another uh, creator that I know uh, in Africa who's doing a bunch of stuff. Just bear with so me. So it looks second. like as amazing as it is for, you know, United States citizens, countries, you know, big countries like Canada, it sounds like it's really could be extremely valuable in some of these, you know, countries where maybe they they don't have the same kind of access as we do to banks and that type of thing totally and where where self-custody is important right you gotta keep in mind in some countries their currency is not of good quality or they print right. it or it depreciates against the dollar and so now you have a currency that you can get on the internet uh, it can sit on your phone. You own it forever on your phone. As long as you keep that 12 word seed phrase, which when Brad, when you started up, it said, just save it to your photos, you know, save it to your photos. You don't have a million dollars on code today. You're only going to have, you know, 30, 40 bucks, all good. Uh, but as long as you keep that seed phrase safe, you own the coins on your, your phone. And you can see and uh, Faith here actually using it in Africa. And she has a bunch of content. So I'm going to just click and do her tip card. And I'm going to send her a tip live on stream. So this is what it looks like when you open up the tip card. So if you want to download code, again, just click that button, download it. So got my scanner up. Going to go ahead, pull her tip card onto my phone. Uh, I'm not going to send her rupees because, you know, <laughs> send her $2 of kin again. Let's go with swipe. Boom. So the card clears and I just uh, gave Faith $2. So I'm pretty excited about this blowing up in, um, we've seen people in Togo. I believe Faith is in Nigeria or um, Ghana, but uh, here she's using it. Oh, those are Nigerian dollars there. 
So she's using it for airtime, which I believe are phone minutes. So she manages like a convenience store and loads phone minutes on people's car on people's phones, which actually in Nairobi, in Kenya, they use phone minutes as currency, which is pretty interesting for payments. Um, but here she's taking payment in code and then issuing the phone minutes um, using whatever this device is for the local yeah. carrier. But let's say I give Ken, right? So here's a digital dollar bill. Now this digital dollar bill uh, on my screen, code actually has a patent on sending cash with a digital dollar bill, which is really cool. The other part is because code is an L2, this is a pre-signed Solana transaction. So as soon as your wallet scans this, and actually Brad, go ahead and see if you can scan that. Sometimes it, it glitches with the uh, the glare, but you might Which, even uh, be able to scan this. The, you wanted me to hit the give button? Nope, all you do is just use your scanner. You don't even click anything. It's just the, the view. It might be too much glare if I turn off well, my... It... My scanner, yeah, it's not nothing. Nothing yeah. is scanning. Uh, Here, let me let me try again. See see if that works. Yeah, there, there we go. go. So that was the first experience. And you can actually I, see it. Was yeah, there you go. Put in your wallet. Yeah, I'm gonna. <laughs> and I ain't giving it back, Josh. That's mine, baby. That was the first experience code uh, developed, and that was over a year ago. That was incredible. Like everyone experienced that. Like this is amazing. I've never experienced crypto like this. So, um, yeah, awesome, man. I really had a lot of fun hanging out with you today. I'm really excited to share this video with my community, and uh, really looking forward to you know being a uh, supporter of this project long term. I see a lot of value in it. And, you know, once again, as you said, this is not financial advice. I am not a financial advisor, folks. Definitely but not. this is a project where I see incredible potential. And I'm definitely going to be putting some of my money where my mouth is and buying a bag of this token and looking forward to seeing what happens to it over the next three, six, nine, 12 months and for years to come. So, uh, appreciate you, Josh. If there's any parting words you mentioned, the best place for people to go find you is your Twitter account. Is the is the Kin Twitter account correct? Yeah, Kin Ecosystem. I'll throw that up on screen one last time right here. Go get your notifications on to uh, Kin Ecosystem. Uh, you can see Ted here, uh, the founder of uh, uh, Code. Again, Code is one of many developers that are building with kin but you can see kind of all the curated stuff of what's going on in the ecosystem uh, if you're a writer go try out penny post which is the writing yeah. tool i just showed uh the viral effect here is that you know if you're a writer with a hundred thousand Substack users you cross post on this how many new code and kin users do you just acquire with one article let's say a 20 yeah. percent you know, conversion rate, that's 20,000 new code users and kin users. And now what happens if all those kin users go buy $10 or $25 using the Cato integration in app because they need more kin to spend it on the internet? What happens? Yes. That that generates buy pressure for the underlying token and supply and demand. You know, you do the math, right? We're all in crypto because we want to see mass consumer adoption. I think this is the best project I've seen in this uh community so right in crypto but yeah awesome man we'll make Thank sure you. that the link to the to the twitter account your website all of the important stuff is in the socials uh in the or all of the socials are in the description of this video so uh for those of you that are watching just go uh click into the description everything will be there that you need and with that man i'm going to let you go enjoy your evening i know it's getting to be almost bedtime out there in uh, toronto oh, yeah so <laughs> Thank you again for being here and have a fantastic night, Josh. Thanks, Brad.